pillars. Uh, you have to have pillars that will hold you no matter what. And some coaches call it the non-negotiables uh, or some coaches call it you know, the mission statement or something that will never go away. For me, it was the pillars. We had to put our playing strategy on some pillars that will be strong and will never shake. Um, so that's number one. Number two, game playing strategy. So in each zone, how are we going to play? Uh, we started in the offensive zone, which Daryl Belfry was most influential. I was always, you know, let's start in the defensive zone with the breakout. Let's get over the neutral zone. Let's have an entry and then have a shot on that and then stay in the offensive zone. And we completely switched it around. Like number one point is let's be in the offensive zone. Let's stay there as long as we can. And let's outchange the opponent and uh, let's stay away from our zone as, far, as, as much as we can and as long as we can. Um, and I'll show you the details of that. And three, our attitude. And uh, we took a lady, um, Milada Horakova. She was uh, four years in a concentration camp of the Germans, uh, with the Germans. Uh, when the Nazi occupied Czech Republic, and then she was two years uh, imprisoned by the communists. And uh, then finally the communists killed her. So we had her as a, as a example, as a leader, as a spiritual leader for us, because she never, um, she basically just was for human rights, not even, she was not a feminist. She was for equal human rights. And of course, she was advancing women, uh, but she never wavered of her opinion. And uh, she had offers from the communists to, to leave the country and to write books and to live in England. And she could have chosen to leave the country and have a uh, cozy life. And she just chose to stay and to speak her own truth and never waver from who she was as a person and what she believed in. And so we had her as our spiritual leader, and uh, we hope that the girls will uh, sort of connect to that attitude that we will never, ever waver from who we are as a team and from how we play the game and how we approach the game. So I'm, I'm just going to go through the playing philosophy pillars. Number one pillar is puck possession um, and all the principles, moving the puck, keeping the puck. And the most important one here is improve the conditions of the puck for the next player. So Daryl and I have identified that the most important thing for these girls is that we have to pass to the open player. And I know it sounds so fundamental, but we watched two games, one against Sweden, one against Finland in the last 2019 World Championships. And we found 85 times that our girls, the Czech girls, passed it to somebody who was not open. Uh, so we thought, you know what, like that's going to be our center of attention. Like, let's find the open space. Let's find the open player. And all the other stuff you can read here, we wanted to have some crisscrossing. We wanted to have give and go mentality. We wanted to support the puck really actively, manage the puck properly at times. Um, and uh, but improve the conditions of the puck for the next player. So if the next player gets the puck, her conditions are better than my conditions. So that means she has a little bit more time. She has a little bit more space. So always thinking about the next player. It's not so much about me. I'm going to protect it. I'm going to skate with it. I'm going to get to the middle, but I'm going to pass it to somebody who has even better uh, situation for herself uh, on the ice. So that was the number one pillar. And here, I'm not going to show the videos. We showed about 10 different clips that we're talking about what, what it means, puck possession. Uh, the second pillar, obviously, extremely important if you want to have puck possession is movement and space. And, and for us, you know, when we watched the girls uh, again before we took over, it was everything around the boards, you know, D to D and up the wall, uh, jamming it up the wall. Um, a lot of the game has happened around the wall. There was no passes, no passes to the middle of the ice at all. 
And we thought that's going to be the main thing. We need to value the middle years. And we even gave it a name in Czech. We call it the mother, mother. Uh, just we felt like in the family, everything evolves around the mom. And so, you know, the father works and the kids go to school, but mom is the center of the family. The mother is the center of the family. And we felt we, so we call the middle of the ice the mother. So let's pass the muck to, puck to the mother or let's skate with the puck to the mother. And, um, and there's some uh, philosophy around it. You know, we wanted to have some speed from behind. We wanted to have a weak side presence. You're gonna see it on the video. Uh, we wanted, if the puck is dumped in or anywhere, we wanted to always have three people going for the puck, not just one. Um, again, the weaknesses of the team were one player was going for the puck and four were watching. Uh, so we wanted to make sure all five players are involved. But, you know, when the puck gets dumped in or chipped in or there's a loose puck, we want to go three people to the puck, not just one. Um, so that's that was the second pillar. Any questions to that so far or any comments? OK, I take it as a no. Um, and again, here um, again, 10 to 15 clips from the NHL international hockey. Uh, what is movement and space and time? Uh, the third pillar, completely foreign to the girls and to probably a lot of teams. Uh, and again, Daryl was quite instrumental at this. You know, when we were watching the games from the past, we had really, really bad changes. We would dump the puck in quite a bit and go for change and automatically concede uh, one or two zones. And when you do that against Finland or US or Canada, then it's automatically shot on net or scoring chance or uh, extended possession in our defensive zone for the opponent. So we wanted to make sure that when we change, we have the puck. Uh, and the other thing that Daryl has introduced to me, and I've never thought about it like that, is that cumulative shift effect. That means improving the game situation for the next line. So. When I go on the ice and we have a defensive zone face-off and I go off the ice, I at least want to go off the ice when we have the puck and we are in the neutral zone. If not better, if we are in the offensive zone. So I started the shift in the D zone, but I'm handing off the shift to the next line and I am in the offensive zone. I'm, an, in, I'm leaving the ice in a better condition than I found it. And I have to say, we have not succeeded with this very much. At times we did, but this was probably the hardest thing to teach because it is such a habit, especially at the national team level where you get all the best players from the best teams that they want to finish the shit with a sh shot on goal or with a scoring chance they want to feel like they have contributed. And for them, so we had to reevaluate and explain what does it mean contribution to the team. And when they didn't feel like they have contributed when, let's say, they would have a great offensive zone puck possession and would go for a change, but not have a shot on net. That for them was not a good shift. So we had to explain this. Well, you know what? You didn't get a shot. You didn't have a scoring chance. But now the second line is going on the ice against the uh, opponent who's been on the ice for 50, 55 seconds, is exhausted, and now they are fresh, and we can create some scoring chances. So this was a hard sell, and I don't think we have really succeeded. You know, like I said, very sporadic, very sporadic, and it, we had opportunities many, many every game where we were in the offensive zone and we could have made one or two even line changes. Uh, I will show you one shift against Sweden and we just gave a weak shot from a non-shooting position and the goalie made a save and we just gave uh, free out of jail card to the opponent. So this puck position line changes 
big challenge, even though we practiced it every practice. We had games uh, in the practice that uh, have, you know, instead of us blowing the whistle, we had the girls changing uh, only when their team had the puck. So we are constantly working on it. Uh, but um, it was not something I can say was very, very successful at the end. And you need it. If you want to have a puck position team and you want to spend a lot of time in the offensive zone, you have to outchange the opponent and really tire them out. So again, there was um, quite a bit of um, video on that. And the last pillar was relentless puck pursuit. And we taught the girls that we have to out battle and out trace everyone. And that, you know, the loose puck battles, it's where the game is at. It's nice to have puck possession philosophy, but if you don't, um, when the puck pursuits, the puck battles, the loose puck situations, then uh, you're not going to have the puck very much. So, and I think, I think the girls really changed their attitude and you will see some of the, uh, some of the video. We were really good at, especially exit kills and forecheck. Uh, and even in the defensive zone, uh, we were good at stealing pucks and closing quick uh, stops and starts. We have improved quite a bit. Um, angling was something the girls didn't know. Forward angling for the defensemen, uh, stick in lanes, and all the all that stuff. The first three steps. I think this was one of the things that they have gotten really, really good, and uh, it was actually one of our strengths. Yeah. So those were the four pillars, and now we go to the game strategy, and I'm just going to show you. Um, how it works. So offensive zone position offense is where we start. And then when we lose the puck, what do we do? Well, 